Well, we are here today to give you a really fun show. We're going to be answering your questions about everything, fantasy, how we shower, things like that. You're going to really enjoy it. Make sure you leave your comments on how you shower. Have a blast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in. Thursday, June 15th, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway, back with you. Fun show today. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. We have a uh, AMA of sorts on the show. Some fun questions. Going to enjoy the off season. Going to speculate a little bit. Uh, we have a quick question that's uh, we get asked quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, league format question that'll be fun to get into. A couple quick things at the top. Number one, we're pre-recording this show. So if some game-breaking news took place uh, in the preceding days, we, we we're getting out of town with the family, so we pre-recorded a couple episodes. The content machine cannot stop. No. No. Uh, you must be content with the content, but the but the news doesn't stop either. So uh, hope, hopefully, it is. I t- I, I did a uh, Zach Morris. Oh, did you time out? Yeah. Oh, fantastic! Is that, is that why, uh, as of this recording, Hopkins and Cook don't have interest? Yeah, nothing is nothing yeah. has happened. Yeah, they've clearly still not signed anywhere <laughs> right now. Yeah, anything anything that took place in the last few days, we will cover uh, exhaustively. Brooks will be exhausted when we get done talking about it. That's how much we will talk. Yeah, yeah, we will talk so much that Brooks will be absolutely it's like, oh, God, stop. Stop talking. He's going to talk the wind right out of his lungs. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yep. Well, there um, it was. but like I said, we have a great show today. Got a footballer's AMA. Um, we have a giveaway. Head over to footclangiveaway.com if you want to win a Garrett Wilson signed jersey, which by the end of this year may be one of the hottest items around. Will be. Will yeah. be, according to Dynasty Manager Mike Wright. What? <laughs> um, that being said, even though the show is being pre-recorded by, by a few days, the UDK will be updated with everything instantly. Uh, yes, it will. As it has been so far. Uh, got the whole team all over that. So rankings, blurbs, all of that stuff gets updated immediately. The, UD- the UDK never goes on vacation. No. It's a... No. Uh, it's a hard worker. I mean, other than the whole, like, during the season. And I mean, the, it has an off that's, season. Right. It's yeah. charging up. It's charging up. Got it. It's, it's like got a bear. Got a, yeah. Just Jake it's Green. hibernation. It's hibernating. <laughs> okay. That's what they're doing. They're, they're charging? Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Legitimately. Um, FootClanGiveaway.com. We're looking for UDK testimonials. Those of you that have used it uh, in the past want to share something about it. Just looking for a little selfie video about your experience share it with us and be entered to win a signed garrett wilson jersey yep and i would say do not forget the dynasty podcast hot episode that came out yesterday yes uh, i love that episode. borg and bets they're talking about the afc off season from a dynasty perspective i mean the dynasty pod keeps rolling it's hot the people are if i'm honest it. i think kyle was kind of he was on yesterday I imagine so. Yeah, it, the the insights were great. All right, quick question. What are your favorite alternatives to having a kicker or defense in your leagues from a lineup perspective? So is it adding a third wide receiver? Is it adding a second flex position? Do you have a preference? I prefer extra flex options. Um, I know a lot of leagues go with the three wide receiver over the flex. Really, if you're in a half PPR, certainly if you're in a full PPR, adding a flex, really, it, it's it's pretty similar to basically making a three wide receiver system. Because once you get, uh, you know, past the the, the top twenty four, thirty six uh wide receivers and running backs, 
then those flex positions are usually going to be filled with wide receivers in PPR formats. But it gives you it gives you just more ways to construct a roster. And personally, like my preference is to get. Uh, you know, I don't want kickers in my league. I don't play in leagues with kickers. I don't. I won't. Don't yeah, ask me. Boom Boom says bye bye. Yeah, to kickers. Um, I I like playing with defenses. That's fun. I do. Um, I don't. Uh, you know, I I don't think we should get rid of defenses, but. My preference is to have two extra flex, and I would prefer a flex there than a defense. I mean, why not both? But now, um, what about getting rid of defense just in NFL football? They've done their best. So our like, <laughs> I mean, our fantasy scores will be out of control. Yeah, the, they're working on it. The competition committee at the NFL has really made some great rule changes over the last decade to ensure you can't play defense. That, from what I understand, they are moving from eleven men on defense to five. That's going to be the step one. Okay, so Safe, you pick, safety first. Yeah, right. so yeah. Baker Mayfield can have a good season. Um, <laughs> yeah, play against half as many. I am curious if. Al Borland prefers defenses in leagues simply because I know you were haunted once upon a time by the, I guess, unpredictability of defenses in fantasy football. Yeah, get them out of here. Okay, that's I hate what defenses. I thought. I'm uh, with you, Al. All right. Oh, are you on oh, team wow. no defense? Deuce are strong. Dynasty redraft, I'm, I'm good without. Interesting. Hmm. Yeah, dynasty leagues, I usually don't like defenses in there no, redraft leagues i enjoy defense now yeah, Al, Ian, yeah go ahead uh i will since andy took this time to remind you of your uh epic collapse at the hands of what was that ian book was ian that book his? threw a pick six on the first play of the yes. game in uh, a game that i needed him to throw a pick six uh there were many moons ago a championship matchup between myself and uh, andrew holloway where i had stashed a defense for four weeks <laughs> looking at their championship matchup how'd and that work out and uh, there was Chargers. Yep, oh, I remember it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I remember it. Yes, you know. I remember the it to this are, day. The wounds are fresh. There was a fumble recovered for a score that put me over the top. Whew. So it goes both ways. <laughs> you know something interesting is that, um, and this will be a kind of backhanded way to get this fact into the world. Okay. But Jason has never lost a championship game that he's been in in any league. Mm-hmm. So wow. when he's made the title game, he has always won. He has never he's, had. He's Kevin Love. He I, has I, never had the feeling no, never. of losing a title game, which I believe I have six second place finishes in our main league, I, which is excruciating. <laughs> I hate that you have put that out into the world. <laughs> that was important. Because now I feel like. I feel like it's all got to reverse and come back to the karma woke up. Yeah, like, exactly. wait a minute. Whoa, I wasn't aware of this. I'm it gonna will be deal mentioned. Some losses. The next title game you're in will uh, be mentioned the whole week. Yeah. But it'll, I mean, look. It's undefeated. Yeah. I, it, it probably feels better than, yeah, than my I side of I really things. enjoy winning the championships when you get there. Also, to, to just go backwards two seconds to the conversation we're having about maybe replacing defenses, your stories, Andy, your story about the Ian book, the, the pick six you needed, the championship uh, win uh, from stashing a defense for four weeks, you guys just illustrated that defenses should not go away in redraft leagues. I love them. They're, I mean, that, that right there was not just pure um, – kick or luck and wind or not wind or whatever you guys made informed decisions based upon things that were somewhat predictable obviously there's there's you know there is a, 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 a you know a chunk of luck in fantasy football and in sports for the balls to bounce the right way but you know that defenses can be really really fun and especially when you talk about playoffs when you talk about the 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 stretch leading up to it the strategy of stashing and and um yeah you don't stacking defense we're not stashing kickers you're not holding a second kicker on your bench and you're drafting kickers with your last pick and so i don't really have anything against having kickers in your league mm -hmm. but That's the point the point is more like every position has un a lack of predictability to a degree kickers has the most um and yes there are metrics you could point to as like okay you want a good offense and and, and stuff like that but there's not a lot of time spent in your draft season. There's not a, you know, every league, the best 
the best defenses get selected a few rounds ahead of the other defenses, and and it's strategic as to when you go in and, and, and grab one. So regardless of what the, the deucers say about defenses, we like them. Mm-hmm. That's why we're have you been burned? this side of the table. Have you been burned? Clearly. <laughs> Brooksy? No, no, I just got a taste of in Dynasty not having to Yeah, that's nice. And I get that, yeah. like it's different, but I just like not Ooh. having to that's fine. Yeah, I, pick defenses I at do, all. I do prefer in Dynasty leagues to not have defenses. And the difference there, you go like, whoa, whoa so what? What's the difference? The difference is the waiver wire aspect of defenses and redraft is what makes it fun you're cycling through these teams you're looking weeks out it, that yeah, is you got a bye weeks and that's then a you gotta blast. drop them and as opposed to in you know obviously in a dynasty league no defense will ever be you know pretty much on the waivers or you know no playable one all right mike clear your throat okay it's time to go mailbag mailbag Ooh. hey man welcome and one and all to the mailbag if you have a question for the show you can always go to the website thefantasyfootballers.com click the submit a question button or better yet you can dial the voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB kicking it off with a voicemail today hey ballers deucers repscallions Ooh. as it were I just traded for Mark Andrews and um, had this idea that maybe I could just flip him for Kyle Pitts plus others. Um, maybe now is the time. You tell me. Thanks. Love the show. Oh, man. I mean, clearly this is a high risk, high reward proposition. I, I, pr I presume we're talking dynasty here. Yeah, I would imagine so. And... Um, Jason, I know last year there was a considerable amount of discussion about doing this with Kelsey. Mm -hmm. um, at least from what I recall from your champ, champ, champ team. Yep, I you, you were trying. I I offered Kelsey and a first for Kyle Pitts, and instead, and um, it was rebuked. It was rebuked instead by an idiot. <laughs> that dumb dummy said, in, "Why don't you just go win another championship yeah. with Kelsey?" And we're like, would you? Right, have, we you did. probably would not have won a title. Oh no! no. Oh no! <laughs> no, we would not have won the title if they had accepted the trade we were trying to have go through. So thank you, thank you for our championship. Um, but this is an interesting question, right? Kyle Pitts is twenty-two point seven years oh, old. Gosh, I know he's a baby boy. He's younger than Dalton Kincaid, I think, or one of those rookie tight ends. Uh, Mark Andrews is 27 years old, there so you. that's that's a five-year gap. Give me Mark Andrews. But 100% Mark Andrews. 100% to me it's Mark Andrews because – It's a different equation with Kelsey in the discussion, right? Yes. Oh, you yeah. would probably say do it. Yes. If it's, other than – it's time to close your title window. Kelsey's 33.7, and I know we joke about Zeus years and all that, and he looks great, and maybe he's got another year or two of dominance, but, I mean, that's that's insane. We're not talking about – that's he's 11 years – he's over a decade older than, <laughs> than Kyle Pitts. So, yeah. That's that, wild. And, yeah, I mean, Kelsey, it's a different equation. I, I wanted to glance briefly at uh, – yeah, I mean, Andrews is under contract for a while. They just signed Lamar Jackson. His situation is stable. He is uh, very much Lamar Jackson's guy. I wouldn't be doing – and now the plus, I mean, maybe. If you really believe in Kyle Pitts and the plus is a couple of firsts, I mean, maybe you think about it. Yeah, I mean, there's certainly a deal where you can get that done. I, I would love to have Kyle Pitts in Dynasty, um, but I would love to have Mark Andrews in Dynasty. Mark Andrews is my number one Dynasty quarterback I don't I, uh, tight end or yes <laughs> yes tight end um and and by a pretty big stretch in in my mind well I did say it was an AMA this next question comes in from Instagram it says nothing to do with fantasy it's all right you guys always keep it clean on the air who has the dirtiest mouth outside business hours <laughs> owl <laughs> <laughs> he's owl not wrong Borland there is uh that is the answer however um, there is a certain place where <laughs> it is more easy for any of us to be loose with the tongue, and that would be on the pickleball courts. Yeah. It is the, the field of competition. The field of competition, 
And when yeah. things go poorly, it's never when things go yeah, really not well. A lot of, it's not an excitement hurrah. Yeah, no, there's that too. <laughs> there's a huh, little bit, but I mean, l- listen, Jason has broken like six paddles so far <laughs> on the pickleball course. Yeah, I get angry. The most recent one was a tomahawk throw into the wall. Yeah. Um, which I had to file an insurance claim for the other day. <laughs> uh, so the 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 pickleball court, I don't think any of us are um, above reproach. Nope. Yeah, that's that's true. But I think in everyday life, it's it's rare. Yeah. Ish. Ish. Yeah. Yeah, keep P- PG thirteen. But Al is the answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Uh, here's a question from YouTube. Joe wants to know: Do you guys have a second team that you root for? And if so, who? Uh, every P.S. Team. Jason cannot say every team to pander to everybody. <laughs> yeah, I pre-read that one. Um, a second team that we root for. It to, I don't have one personally. Um, I have one seemingly every year. Uh, just a sure. team that I fall in love with and I'm rooting hard for. You know, is the Lions. Um, it, it, it's usually the... Cinderella type story, the underdog. If I had to just guess right now who my 2023 team is that I'm really rooting for, I want to see success. It's the Jacksonville Jaguars. I want to see T Law become a <laughs> Hall of Famer. I want to see that transition happen. I don't want him to be a franchise quarterback. I want him to be what he was drafted to become a an all timer. Okay. I thought franchise quarterback was a pretty high bar. No, I mean, when you're the 101, uh, but you're also the, like, clear-cut two years out, you know, you're, you're waiting and tanking for Trevor Lawrence or Andrew Luck before him. When you're one of those, and, you know, just going back, you're hoping that you're drafting a Hall of Famer. I mean, you, I mean you'd be happy with a franchise guy, for sure. But I'm just saying, yeah, like, no, you, I know you, you're you not looking see. for Derek Carr who's been a franchise quarterback for forever, you, you know, you're hoping you get Peyton Manning. Agreed. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, all right, this is Do you another... have a team? Oh, yeah, yeah. I Historically, I've kind of said the the Packers because um, I have family back there, but they've moved away, so I'm less loyal. <laughs> uh, Great pick. Great pick. Which is Al Borland's team. How long did you live in uh, in Wisconsin? I was just trying to remember. I've been there a number of times, <laughs> but yeah, I've never lived there. Can this whole episode revolve uh, around Al Borland? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, Green Bay's been there before uh, as the number two team, so that's kind of my default answer, I guess. I say, it, for me, it's the Vikings, but it, pretty much every year, like kind of what Jace is talking about, of, of he finds a team. I often like to find a team just in every division. I find it enhances my love of, oh, like the, of Saints. the NFL. The Saints are definitely your team in that division. Uh yeah, well it it does rotate like okay. from year to year. Often it's the the team that is the underdog, but I see a path for like oh man, they could rebuild and they could get it going this year. So just saying, hey, like like you you don't have to have just one team. You don't have to have lived in the place where you you like that's where your fan base. So I'm I'm fine with Al being a Green Bay Packer fan. And honestly, if you grow up in a town, that doesn't have to be your team. Like there's, I, 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 it doesn't I hear have what to be. you're saying, but you're wrong. <laughs> it's, you're, you're I, just, ba- based on the fact that birth we, lottery, yeah, based on the birth fact that lottery is absolutely true. We are absolutely, we yeah. are, you know, I'm, loyal Cardinal fans. That's that proves that. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you I are mean, because uh, they suck. And and because the 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 lows are low and the highs are high when you're when you've been with a team for a long time. If everybody jumps on the Golden State Warriors like KD did, um, then, then yeah, cool, you want a title, but you're you're rooting for the number one team. I, but to your point, fantasy has changed fandom in general. Like, my son's favorite team is the Chargers. Now, it's not because of a birth lottery. It's not because of their defense. It's because he loves Austin Eckler. And so in fantasy, like, I, I like the Chargers a lot because I'm a big Justin Herbert fan. Jason – wants to see Trevor Lawrence succeed so Jacksonville's the team like as fantasy players we generally we might have loyalty to a player that's won us a championship for sure and suddenly we follow in their career because you love like Arian Foster like I right. 
I loved watching movie the, star. the Texans. Yeah, from draft day. <laughs> star from draft day, Arian Foster. So, yeah, I mean, you know, I, I, I think that uh, Mike's mostly right there. I think, I think fantasy makes it really fun. Like, if you talk – we've had Austin Eckler on the show a couple of times, and, like, he understands the game. He, he will be going to a, uh, a, a road stadium, and he will hear the crowd as he's walking off the field – you know, dapping him up for his performance on the field. And there are Austin Eckler fans now. There are Trevor Lawrence fans. Like, that's fun. I mean, yeah. it also makes it – it's what makes football so great is because we'll all sit down and watch kind of two mediocre teams maybe mm -hmm. on a Thursday night or a Monday night. And to us, the excitement's the exact same as watching a, a, a high-tier divisional leader matchup because we're rooting for the players we love. Yeah, my, my favorite team might be Brees Hall. You know, so I hear you. <laughs> That's your favorite team. That should have been your answer. That's great. Um, although Atlanta is now coming into the picture. Yeah, that's true. Uh, all right. Uh, let's hit another voicemail. Hey, guys. Nick in Alaska. With the amount of content in the UDK, do you have a recommended order of operations into consuming all of its content? Thanks. Love the show. Um, via injection. Generally, yeah. mm. is you want to do subcutaneous, IV, subcutaneous, uh, or or IV, either one into the fat or straight into the veins. Yeah, either way is <laughs> fine. Um, licensed professional, get them involved. It, it, Al would do it himself. So there, uh, th this is a this is actually a really good question because I've I, seen I it think, a lot this year. Actually, yeah, I mean there is a ton of content, and you go, well, well gosh, where do I start? Where do I go? The rankings are obviously going to be your default for drafting for information for you know the, uh, there's all the blurbs right there Rankings, you can watch the sheets, you yeah. can watch individual player profile videos so like if you're on the rankings and, and you're deciding between two players you can click those right now this time of year i think is where you can kind of go through some of the uh the research and analysis uh, tabs of the udk and and you know read up on some of the coaching changes or um, take a look at, at that type of information. I also think this is a good time of year to look at the videos as a whole. Like, you know, it's, it's basically just more content of this show. It's like, um, you know, sometimes we, for, we do a lot of, um, stats and, and information in those videos and we'll get to this show that we're recording. And I think we've shared this. I think everybody knows the information that we've been talking about these players. That's really valuable information in it takes a long time to go through all of those, you know, hundred videos. So it's like that, you know, over the next month or two, that's just a fun little toilet time. Yeah. Yeah. Or even not on the toilet anywhere you are. Sure. Um, but the rankings are kind of home base. I think you're right. And, and there's just a lot of resources in there. People want to know, we've tried to add some videos for a number of the sections that kind of introduce you to how to use them, but we'll continue to do that as well. And um, as you get closer to your draft, uh, we have the cheat sheet creator where you can go in and customize it, put it exactly the things you want, don't want, your scoring, all that, and get prepped uh, day of. And then after your draft, the analyzer to see how you did. Instagram question uh, from Sam says, what is your favorite memory from the podcast? Mm. Mm. And um, I almost think we should maybe build a bit of a Mount Rushmore of memories because yeah. it's been a while. <laughs> uh, I've I've got well I've it, got one that's in there for sure. I've got one that's in there for sure. It's it, it is my favorite memory without a doubt. Um, and this is this I I feel like there's two different questions here because like the Mount Rushmore, this moment wouldn't be on the Mount Rushmore of like greatest show moments. Um, but it, for me personally, my favorite moment was when we had our live show in minnesota right yep. that was our first big on the road live show and you know it sold out and it was packed and it the people were crazy and we come out on stage and the crowd is just cheering roaring just more than i thought would ha happen and then they just kept going and just it didn't stop and i'm yeah, like yeah. uh oh <laughs> Oh no! Oh no! Stop! Stop cheering! I'm gonna start crying. And yeah. then um, I did everything in my power to try not to uh, break down on stage. And um, I think I did well enough. Yeah, you yeah, got through. yeah. You, you I got think there. Mike got a little teary. There oh, for too. sure. It was uh, it was overwhelming. Those Minnesota people—they like the fantasy football. Well, and it was our first time. Like I don't care at all now. 
at all. <laughs> Just, I don't, you know, I expect it. Uh, you know, the Megala okay, show, you guys yeah. better bring it. Um, no tears from me. No, that's, that's not true. <laughs> no, that's a, that's good. I, I thought, um, like for me, show 1000, oh, yeah. when the deucer surprised us with the on, you know, the live recording with the, uh, the wives were on the show out of nowhere. We didn't know that was coming. And the fans. Um, another one would just be like this broad memory of the early days in the upstairs bedroom. Um, right. Where, you know, I don't know how many times we've told it, but like when we recorded back then, like we're in Arizona. This was one little bedroom. This was afternoon recording in Arizona where it's 120 outside. We had a window air conditioner to help, uh, I don't know, keep us alive. And, but we had to turn it off for every recording because it was too loud for the recording. So every episode was also a sweating exercise. Oh, yeah, yeah. We went sweat lodge. We went places. And so... Um, Mentally. <laughs> yeah, so it was always... I mean, just that broad memory of, like, um, Matt Harmon was the only guest to visit mm -hmm. in the original studio because uh, that was all that would fit, probably. But um, that's a that's a good memory from the show, the early days. The Yeah, all those are, are fantastic. Um, yeah, the, the memories of, like... Sitting down, this is like early, early, I'm at uh, my daughter's dance class, so she's in there, you know, I'm checking in, and I'm, I'm, but I'm also checking the download numbers, and I'm like, guys, we got, we got like 25 downloads this hour, it's a new record, and just watching those. Mike used to be fastidious <laughs> yeah. in updating oh, the yeah. Slack channel with like every, it was hour, hour. over hour. Yep, I had, I had yeah. a document of every single hour so we could track what was going <laughs> on. And Antonio Gibson Day was that was a really good day when I when I had kind of been talking about him for the entire off season and then just and then uh the day Adrian Peterson was waived and I was just driving into the office because I knew what was about to happen on the show. I was blasting yellow card, I'm singing at the top of my lungs. It was because it, it was like holy, holy crap, it's actually going to happen. Yeah, the uh, oh, was David Johnson song. Yeah, yeah, that comes to mind for yeah. sure. Um, all you, right, you winning the the Millie Maker. Oh, yeah. yeah, I mean that that wasn't too bad. A <laughs> lot of good moments. So that's a good question. Appreciate stay, it. Stay with us. We'll have yep. more shared together. Yeah, and, and favorite uh, memories, the ones we have not even created. Oh gosh, I mean, yes, <laughs> it's the friends we've made. Just want to hold way. hands, right? <laughs> I was wondering if he was reading it off of a fortune cookie. Uh, quick break. Back with some more questions. All right. Um, this question comes in from Keith. He says, "My question is, how do you feel about Cooper Cup's health for the upcoming season?" There's a, we we answered it in in our rankings, uh, yeah. But but what's your overall thought there? Well, I'd say, th uh, thankfully, we work with Matthew Betts, who is our injury guy. Uh, he is a PT, a licensed PT. Uh, if you are not following him on Twitter, uh, you should be. And this is where someone reminds me. I think he's at the Fantasy PT. Do I got yeah, that? Yeah. Right. Uh, but it's a tremendous follow. We're we're stoked to have him on the staff because look. Not a doctor, right? Uh, you, me, you yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean. Like, yeah. I, I can't diagnose an injury. I can just see Suffer what, them. See what is that? Oh, I can do that. But let's see what is out there. And uh, Betts has let us know. Uh, no, it was that we had the high ankle sprain in week ten. He had what is called a tightrope procedure, which has a high success rate. He will get stronger throughout the season, and but he will enter training camp at one hundred percent. So very confident. Yeah, and there's uh he even does Matthew Betts a an injury podcast. Yes. Every Friday for patrons over at jointhefoot.com our community of uh supporters. So uh just an extra resource for those of you that need that follow up from somebody that's not just speculating, somebody right. that has has helped people through a variety of these injuries and knows what's in store. Yes, studied the body. Cuz it's not you know, it's not binary. It's not healthy, unhealthy. In fantasy. Right. It, yep. It's generally a spectrum of uh, on their way back to health. One of the reasons why the Jets, you know, could add Dalvin Cook or could have already by the time this show is recovering or is uh, airing, Jason. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Instagram question from Hurricane Tomas on 
on three, everyone say the perfect number of boneless wings to order for watching a game. For one person, right? This is one person? Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, yeah. obviously. Uh, so on okay, three. So hold on. So the perfect number of boneless wings for one person for one game? Yes. Yeah. And as this one, two, three, go? Yeah. yeah. All right, all right, all right. All you right, can here. do the count. Okay. One, two, three, twelve. 10. Was that two? Did I, gave, Jason? I went 12. I went 10. I went 12. <sighs> Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> I changed to 12. That sounds better. <laughs> Uh, like, I, well, I'll finish my 10, and I will be so upset that you guys have two more. I thought about going 24 because it is better to have just a few too many than a, a few too little. But if I order 24, I'm probably going to eat 24 mm -hmm. uh, buffalo boneless wings, and I'm going to have a, a tummy ache. Yeah, the toilet time with the UDK will be less fun. <laughs> the <laughs> It's hard to concentrate on information. When you're when blowing you're a gasket, yeah. <laughs> um, this is a household debate that we have all the time, by the way. The Do you order more, like a lot more, to make sure you're fine? Or do you try to thread the needle on the order, mm. which my wife always tries to do? I'm always like, you can put it in the fridge. Yeah, You can, yeah. Eat, it. You can eat it tomorrow. You yep. know which side of the debate I'm on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Instagram question from Andrew547. How do you decide which figurines make it onto the desk for every show? Oh, that's... That's a Brooksy question. Yeah, Brooks, how do you decide? Brooks is the set designer when it comes to the minifigs. To be honest, it's pretty random. It just try to mix it up and once in a while if, you know, I know we're going to talk about a certain player, I'll I'll put that player out there or something. We, we will but, constantly, it's I mean, pretty you're, random. you're not giving yourself enough credit. You we constantly glance over and if it's a quarterback show, there's there's quarterbacks out. Yeah, yeah, there's exactly. Wide, try to have a little know, fun with it, but just, you know, the attention to detail. He knows from what he's doing. He knows what he's doing over there. Uh, full PPR dynasty question from Caleb: uh, Chris Godwin or Jordan Addison? Full mm. PPR dynasty oh, league. Oh man, dynasty? Yeah, that's Addison. Oh, for that's me. E easy. Addison and dynasty. I was, I was a little bit conflicted really? in Reed. Just easily, <clears throat> easily. I, I, I am confident that Jordan Addison is a great wide receiver. I am confident well, that, he's going to succeed across the field from Justin Jefferson. I'm confident he is very young. Yes. Well, yeah, I mean, Godwin's a great wide receiver, but I genuinely believe he's in decline. That, that That's what it comes down to. Because of all the things that Jason's listed, like confident that he is much younger than Chris Godwin, yes. It, it scientifically mm -hmm. is 100% <laughs> correct. The other things, like I believe, I'm pretty sure that Jordan Addison's going to be a great wide receiver. The, the Minnesota Vikings believe he's going to be a great wide receiver, or they don't take him in the first round. And yet, time after time after time, we see even first round wide receivers. Yeah, Jalen Rager. Uh, Jalen Rager, mm -hmm. uh, just absolutely. Kevin White. Torch. Justin a, Blackman. A, a pick into the ground. Corey Coleman. Corey Coleman. Nikhil Harry. Josh yeah. Doxson. Like, the list is gigantic because. The NFL misses on players all the time, and it so it comes down to I guess if you think Chris Godwin is in decline, what is how old is he? Twenty seven, twenty seven point three. Because if he's not in if he's not in de decline, like he still has many years, especially with his particular skill set of being a great route runner and having good hands. That skill set can go into until he's like thirty three years old. Yeah, he could be a great like slot PPR guy, like a Keenan, like, Keenan like Larry yes. Fitzgerald later career. <clears throat> I, I I like Chris Godwin. He is um, a sure thing, whereas Jordan Addison is not a sure thing. But when you're twenty one point eight, you're very talented, and I believe I'm I'm going to take the rookie. Um, I do believe in Addison as well. Uh, Twitter question. From at uh, Servaz Alobo. What is your shower routine and the way you make the perfect peanut butter and jelly? So, so uh, uh, hold I, on. I don't do them at the same time. Why are they connected here? <laughs> yeah. Is this, I, is this a phrase? Like, what is your shower routine for making a peanut butter and jelly? Is this a phrase I'm not familiar with? Yeah. Is there like a. Or and just two, your way. It's oh, and these are two way. questions. Two so questions. they want to know yeah. how I shower? Yeah, I mean the, the people want to do, know. Uh, like I do my hair before my body. Yeah, you go top down. Okay. If I wash my body, you get it. it's clean, and then I wash my hair. I'm just dirtying up my body again. Wait, 
Are you? I yeah. would say that you're adding more. I mean, I do that order too, but you're adding more soap to your body from your hair. And what what's in that soap that you're washing away? I mean, I don't wash my hair straight down my body. Yeah, that's fine because you're about to wash your body next. Hmm. Now, Mike, do you have a? Is that the order? Uh, if yeah, we, when I wash my hair, the hair is first. Well, it, it'll be shampoo, put the conditioner in, then body, then body, then rinse, then rinse, because you got to have the 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 silkiest of locks. <laughs> uh, but when you like, this is where hey. We're in front of uh, just, there's no one listening. It's just good friends. Mm-hmm. Just got to be honest. Just, just us. When you're washing your body, how many places of your body do you actually wash? I'm going chest, pits, uh, uh, above, pri- uh, private area, private area, above the thighs. Like that's above what I'm saying. The th- I'm just saying I clean above, above the thighs. How yeah. often I touch below the thighs. That's what I said. Like, do you do your feet? Do you actually go oh, no. down? And I, your feet? I believe I'm standing in a lot of soap. <laughs> I mean, that's I the foundation not, of a shower. I have not they're, washed. They're just soaking. I, I they're have, soaking. Thank you. I probably wash wash my feet. Uh, obviously, if they're they're dirty or whatever, but like just a, a normal shower, shower regular yeah. shower. I have washed my feet probably once in it's the last. It's pits year. and privates, my friends. Yeah, that's the. <laughs> pits it's private. pits and privates. Those are the. That's the priorities. <laughs> Everything else is just a bonus. If I got extra time, if I'm in a shower, it's pits and privates, man. Yes. That's what I'm saying. I, I got, You're trying to be honest. Here. Yeah, no, yeah. I'm, but I'm also, I'm glad we're putting it out there because I feel like there is a lot of hidden shame of like this is what people do at least fellers and you you're like oh do I got to pretend like I thoroughly scrub Everyone's, down to my feet you're like no no we we don't since we we're don't just do being it. candid I would say once every couple of months for no reason at all I will step out of the shower water. And do a full body lather as though it's like a reset, like a full oh, clean. Okay, because mm. I feel a like de- a detail. It's once a, a month. De- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. You know, a, I do a full detail. Like, you know, detail every time you wash. Sometimes no. you just wash no. the car. Just doesn't take a need it. Doesn't need it. It was detailed two months ago. <laughs> yeah. But one, but every now and then you, you need every it. Every once in a while, I just I'm just like I'm gonna step out of the water, and I feel like I need to let it soak in. I guess since we're being honest here, <laughs> <laughs> yes. What do we got? Oh, man. So we got? I do wash my legs every shower, but it is the laziest <laughs> thing you have ever. I'm talking fresh, fresh body wash on, and I just I quickly reach down, and just go, yep, yep. That's just, it. Just two. Just places. to say, check the box. I I don't. I guess I'm thinking man eh, it'll do it's, something <laughs> it's like the gif of the security guy yes <laughs> yes i i, I do it Not i mean i ex- waste some body wash on my legs every day below the knees but it is it is barely done it is it's since all the way down we're being honest here <laughs> okay uh are you loofah boys no uh i, I have no pro- i used to be a loofah. i'm a bare loofah. hand yep i, I am I bare too. Hand too. I, I, i'm, I'm oh, with yeah. mike i like it i we like got a, a loofah, loofah boy back there oh now. yeah yeah, I got and that. he says he loofahs his feet every day. I do. Bottoms or tops or both? Bottoms mostly. Interesting. Oof. I might hit the top on the way by. Oh man, that <laughs> that is so much time you're wasting on the way down. <laughs> uh, so no loofahs in no, here. No, no. I tried to buy one of those silicon, um, yeah, scrubbers, the, the rubber that that you know I probably got sold on Instagram, and it was like, you know, it's supposed to not absorb bacteria like loofahs do, and eh, yeah. eh it wasn't spe- it wasn't mm. anything special. You know, I'm, I always I'm, have I'm my old hands fashioned. with me. Yeah. No, I'm old fashioned. I always got my, my hands with me. <laughs> I'm old fashioned, but I use a very fancy shower gel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Now to the much more important, uh, obvious connection right. question. Try to oh, well, we still get the peanut butter and jelly. Uh, I, I mean, perfect peanut butter and jelly. I feel like I'm going to let Jason lead. Two slices of white bread. You're going to do peanut butter first so that you can clean the- Both sides? No, nope, or- one side. Peanut butter, t- peanut butter on both sides, too much peanut butter. Peanut butter on one side, that way you can scrape the knife clean easier than jelly, and then you go into the jelly, you get the jelly on the other side, and then you put the jelly on top of the peanut butter. Okay, so you Wait, you eat it pe- uh, jelly up? Eat a jelly up. So you don't go... Hey, so be, is that jelly down? J- the jelly side on the top. There you go. You, you don't go peanut butter on one piece of bread and then jelly on top of the peanut butter. You jelly the other jelly clean the bread. Jelly the other clean yeah, bread. Yeah, I'm, I'm, okay. in, I'm in one half and then the other half, and then you make them. Uh, they make a baby. Uh. Yep, and that baby is delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody likes peanut butter and jelly more than you, Jason. I love There's peanut butter There's a famous story. Jelly. Jason is uh, what, 18 years married, 17 yeah. Something, something like that. Somewhere, uh, right now, I'm 18. Yeah. Uh, but the, 
your honeymoon was, oh, a, was yes. a cruise and it's unlimited uh, room service. Mm-hmm. And you would tell stories of ordering. I would order 10, 12 peanut butter and jelly sandwiches in the middle of the night. <laughs> I'd just say, bring them. Bring me 12 <laughs> peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. That's and they would fell in love with cruising. And they would do it. And when they dropped it off, it wasn't shameful. It was like, is there anything else I can get for you? I'm like, yeah, 12 more peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Go round them up. I'm going to be here eating these. I will not leave. Now, uh, important question here, because to me, it's foundational to the, the peanut butter jelly sandwich. You drink it with, you eat it with milk. Oh, you gotta go milk. Yeah, you, okay. m- milk is very important. To have you have butter. you uh, you ever you ever done the dippy? No, oh, gross. Uh, white bread and milk. If oh. it's just peanut butter sandwich, I dip it a hundred percent. Really, yeah, it's a great time, Mike. Give it a go. That's you're a fascinating. No, I'm not. You're a monster. All right, next. All right, question. next also, question. Uh, uh, peanut butter and honey vastly uh, superior. Uh, peanut, peanut butter and honey is great. It's great. Yeah. And I won't call it superior, but I won't call it inferior. Okay. All right. And, I, I, can, I can handle that. And uh, because it's important to me, we're going around the room on jelly preferences. <laughs> um, blackberry is my favorite. Okay. Can I get... Uh, uh, straw baba berry for me. <laughs> Strawberry. Yeah. Al? It's grape for me. And you get them chunks out. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no yeah. marmalade. I want, yeah. I want... What are those? Preserves? No, whatever? thank you. Yeah. <laughs> It'll give me the smoothest of the smooth. Yeah. Preserves and marmalade. <laughs> uh, Al is uh, grape. grape. And then the judge? Blackberry is, is delicious. Blackberry's the best. And, and then... The rap uh, scallion. Apricot. Okay. Oh, what? Oh, oh, hey. Hey, shout out. Yeah. shout out to Apricot. Yeah, yeah I don't know. Sure. Well, the apricot sounds like he wants chunks in there. <laughs> yeah, there is chunks. You want chunks in there, don't you, rap? I oh, mean, you rap scallion! <laughs> you rap scallion! When going apricot, the, 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 it could be nice. I knew the it. chunks are just a part of the on a of whole the, wheat there's bread. There's no you know? smooth oh, apricot jelly. You just jellies. threw whole wheat in there. Whole wheat? <laughs> what monstrous? Gotta get the texture. Oh my goodness! Whole no, wheat. it's white bread for peanut butter and jelly. Okay. Uh, make a note that we need to submit this episode for all of the awards. Oh right! This is right. this is incredible stuff. It's gonna be great when <laughs> when when some big news is broken <laughs> over our vacation, and they tune in to Peanut Butter Jelly Hour on the Fantasy Footballers. Peanut Butter Pits and Private. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Show title does writes itself. Oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Um, it's real. I, I've, I'm noticing as a host of a podcast, difficult transition from the. Peanut butter pits and privates back to a fantasy related mm-hmm. question. Just do it. We are uh, a fantasy football show. Uh, Instagram wants to know preferred time zone to watch football in. Uh, only... The Borgogan's back on East Coast time, by the way. Right. So he's he gets to enjoy the or not enjoy. I mean, he would be the one to know though. Like recently experiencing an a, a whole year in Arizona. I I would prefer East Coast time. Uh, just for sports watching. Like I'm I'm a late night guy. You know, a lot of times there's complaints of, oh, you're getting to bed at midnight. The game went long. It's 1230 and the game is still going like, I don't know. I don't care. That's great. That's when I'm that's when I'm alive. Um, but having Sunday mornings more free and oh, my goodness, with the international games coming, doing the whole Yo, five, yeah. six a.m. wake up watch. Not for this guy. I don't want to have to stay up until two in the morning to watch games. Yeah, you get that's to. stupid. You get <laughs> it is a privilege. Um. Wow, Raps Gallon, you're on Team East Coast? Oh, yeah, because I can put my daughter to bed and still watch a football game. Otherwise, I don't get to enjoy it mm, on Thursday gotcha. Night Football. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah, I mean, that, the kids do get in the way of the football. They do. That that You do have to work around that. Um, and and the, the then the bigger conundrum becomes, like, my middle is massive sports fan, so dad's watching football. It's past bedtime, and there's it's like the fourth quarter. He's like, well, dad, can, why can't I just watch the rest of the game? You're like, this is a you're making excellent points here. <laughs> why why can't you just watch the rest of the game? So then usually he stays up and watches the rest of the game. Instagram question: Who's the most fun player you've ever had on your fantasy rosters? The most fun player you've oh. ever had. Oh man! Uh my answer uh, is Todd Gurley. Oh, the, during the year, I guess it was like two during years. The, right? No, it was really was it, it was, but it was one year. Was the year that we bet on the bounce back. And he was – it's the it's the cheat code moment. When you know you have a player that every single week you put him in there, mm-hmm. you win the week because he scores like 45 points. And um, he got me through the playoffs against Brooks. I see him nodding ahead of time. I he, remember. You remember? He, he outscored like 
a third of my team, like yeah. half of my team, <laughs> was, yeah, by himself. So he, uh, I'll go with that one. Yeah, Ladanian. although Tyreek was, it's up there when Tyreek was with Mahomes during one of those breakout years. That's a fun time. Ladanian Tomlinson was always a, a cheat code when you could just win. I I enjoyed Jalen Hurts last year is one of my all timers. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, that's a good one. Uh, for me, it was Antonio Brown. Oh be yeah, I be knew be your answer was <laughs> you were a jerk. Because like not only was the production great, but just watching every game because you know at some point in this game a ridiculous 30 40 yard touchdown is going to happen and you you just you're just sitting there waiting it's not a you weren't sweating with Antonio Brown like oh please please you come through you're just like hmm When's it going to happen? Is it this play? Is it the next one? Antonio Brown brought... I asked Mike to bench him, and he never would. (laughs) Antonio Brown brought a lot of people championships. Through his stretch run of dominance, you know, his whatever it was, five years, four years of absolute dominance, he was one of the most important fantasy assets in all of football. And we're in a keeper league, our league of record. And that entire window, the window of relevance for Antonio Brown, all the best players in our league, they switch teams. It doesn't matter if you're Christian McCaffrey or or who you, they're they're gonna moves happen. Not Antonio Brown. No one in our league but Mike got the taste of that he window. Would not trade him. Instagram question uh, from like totally party says got <laughs> totally. into got into a marital dispute Uh-oh. Oh, over sorry. Jeremy's nickname <laughs> and whether it was Al A L or Al A O W L. Oh. Well, it was Al. It was, yeah. It's For fact, about both. two weeks. Al Borland is what we called him. Named him after Al Borland. <laughs> it, it's due to his uh, him being the manliest of men slash wearing a red flannel yeah, he, frequently. He, did the, uh, he came in with the buffalo plaid on, and he looked like and, Al Borland. And he can handle himself with the tools. Yes, he can. However, I don't know who said it but one time they just referred to him as, it was me it was you yeah you're you, welcome you, it was just a slip and it sounded like owl and yeah it stuck yeah and so now so his nickname is owl o-w-l borland which is good news for their marriage because they're both technically right yeah yeah but okay. owl, the whoever's the owl wins because oh now like, there has to be a winner in, yeah in every, in, marriage, in every marriage in every marriage you want to every marital a dispute here's a pro marriage tip oh boy <laughs> when you have a marital dispute make sure there is a winner and a loser at the end um it's it's really That's, helpful. yeah that is the best Just way solid advice <laughs> <laughs> all right these are some pretty good um ama questions that popped through from from the foot clan uh this one spencer in richmond wants to know the best chess player in the studio i actually know the answer Oh, it's I'm Rob. Just, I'm just afraid to say it. Is it oh. is it Rob or it is Papa Josh? Oh, he's a chess nerd. It's possible that Rob, uh, our our CTO lead programmer, could beat him because I don't know how much chess Rob's played. But I, I mean, I put my money on him normally. But I know jo- Josh has actually played a lot of chess over the I was, years. I was going to say, of the three of us, I know how to play chess. So I, I, I don't know if that is. Uh, I played yeah. chess for a couple you years. Okay, yeah. then 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 not me. Yeah. <laughs> I know I know how to play. And, Any oh, chess aficionados oh, in Deucer's Alley? And I can castle or whatever that's <laughs> whatever oh, that yeah. maneuver is called. Check out this sweet power yeah. up. Um Raps Gallon, you play chess? I mean I played when I was in grade school. Okay. I was pretty good back Were then. Were you in the club? I won a championship in grade school. Whoa, okay. whoa, right. whoa, whoa, but this chess. is fifth grade, so let's calm down. Well, yeah, but your fifth, yeah, your fifth grade chess championship would beat us. For sure. Yeah, well, but hold Interesting. on. We, we already gave this guy a nickname, and we didn't know he was a chess champion. Yeah, Bobby Fisher was on the table, man. <laughs> Oof, we may have to go back to the drawing yeah, we'll board. We'll see. We'll see. That's that's impressive. Fifth grade, nonetheless. Yeah. I mean, I feel like you either, if you can do that, you're definitely better than everybody that's ever yeah. just downloaded an app. Yeah. Um. Okay. All right. We need one more, Brooks. Do you want to pick one for us? Yeah. One more question. I I know you've you've been filtering through a bunch of them. Well, I know we just talked chess. Who's the best foosball player? Oh, that's an Ooh. interesting question. I there, don't know if there's a good answer for there, that. There isn't a great answer because there's different skill sets. Right. Uh, we usually play doubles. We we don't play singles. So it's not like, oh, Andy is the one that wins all the time. I am a defender, and I'm, I I, I would say that I feel I am the best defender. I think you probably yeah. are. Yeah, I, I think you probably are. Um, I suck at offense, so 
uh, take that. We're like for. we are, and by suck it offense, I mean I will destroy oh, any normal person at offense. It is ineptitude. I mean, we are like the the if you were making like a creative character, like we just we cover it all. I can play defense. I'm okay at it. Offense was my specialty, and Andy is like very good at both. Mm -hmm. So it's that's just, true. So <laughs> yeah, you you are the most well rounded. You yes. can succeed up front and succeed in the back. Uh, Mike is more offense. Yep. I am more. Now defense. do pickleball. Andy's the best. That's true. <laughs> It's true. Bad question, hey, Pierce Brooks. <laughs> you yeah, you, you got to know who you are. Yeah. yeah. All right, we're moving on. Best Ball Breakdown, presented by Underdog Fantasy. All right, Best Ball Breakdown. Here we are again every week during the off season, digging into some insights. For underdog fantasy, playing best ball, leading up into the season. It's been a lot of fun. I've been getting into more leagues. So I've been getting those uh, Jason-style alerts of being on the clock almost all the time. I did a uh, a draft with my super hip, cool Dungeons & Dragons, uh, the Dragoneers. We did a four-person. That's the name. Yeah, the Dragoneers. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're doing right. That's the, we, wow. got a, we got a logo. Nerd. Got, I mean, it's a, with a name like that, you could sell action figures. Yeah. That's a perfect. We are we're getting th things. There's big plans. No, oh boy, there's, there's not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but we did uh, a four person, just you know, like a a the, a fast draft with four people. Oh, dude, <laughs> I mean, everyone's team is is it wild? Is just ridiculously loaded. But it's like it was it was so much fun. Of uh, like I I pulled the the two spot and it was like okay, I'm in a four person league i took so i took travis kelsey with the second pick yeah that's the right pick and so, then and they got them a home stack with it it was, just, it was a good time it was a great time last week we talked about kind of our favorite last round pick in best ball this week the question is a player that you refuse to draft at the current <laughs> best ball average draft position so no matter how many times you see that name fly across the board when you're playing best ball which if you're new to that that is just a you do a single draft Every week, the best players on your team get scored. You don't have to change the roster. So it's draft and watch. It's draft and who, who's the best drafter? It's like it actually answers that question legitimately. So the, who's the player you're refusing to draft at the current ADP? My answer is going to be offensive, I think. I, so I, I understand this. I do. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, give I your mean, answer, well, but. it's Devontae Smith and – Interesting. He is currently going off the board at 21.4 as the wide receiver 13. So in a vacuum, I don't have a problem saying Devontae Smith is the wide receiver 13. However, I don't like the ADP because you are, and I know this year the trend is wide receivers are going earlier than they were last year. It's very clear because of this pick and this example, but you are taking Devontae Smith ahead of Derrick Henry. You're taking him ahead of Josh Jacobs. You're taking him ahead of DK Metcalf, a player I have ranked higher. So I can't see a world where me personally, I would go with Devontae Smith at that ADP. Yeah, he is he is very high, but you know, him and and T. Higgins and Jalen Waddle, those those uh, you know, young power twos. Power twos. They they're they're very highly drafted. Um I've got a handful of guys. Debo Samuel is one. I just I've never really been a you know, a, a Debo lover. He was outscored per game by Brandon Ayuk, who goes many rounds later. Right now, he's the wide receiver 17. Um, I just don't really like taking him. But really, the ones I refuse to draft, refuse, are certain tight ends. Um, Travis Kelsey at the current 105. I'm not doing that. I'm taking Mark Andrews because I don't think there's a huge gap there, and he's two rounds later. TJ Hawkinson. Oh, yeah, you bemoaned that on the show. Oh, it's the worst. TJ Hawkinson, Dalton Kincaid, um, those two guys are tight ends I just don't think are worth taking. They aren't going to be difference makers for what you're giving up uh, in your opportunity cost. And, and I'll say DeAndre Swift because he hurt my feelings Oh, uh, very, very much last year. You're working through it, and he's being drafted as the RB twenty one. Like the the market is saying, he is the most important running back for the Philadelphia Eagles, and I, I the the joke of 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 last year. But 
I don't think that Swift is the most important running back. If this is the if this is the depth chart that they have moving into the season, I don't think Swift will be the number one scorer at the running back position. But the the one that hurts me more is DJ Moore, uh, who got traded to the Chicago Bears, being drafted as the wide receiver twenty six. That has it has cooled off. It has gone down. So there may be a, a time period here where DJ Moore ends up it into softens the, enough. Yeah, where you're like, okay, I'll go in because I can, you can see it happen. But it's just the the passing attempts for the Chicago Bears, the the play volume at the top. I mean, they're just they're way too low to sustain, and you would have to have a big big play, you know, every four games or so for DJ Moore to come through with any sort of relevance at that draft price. Uh, Justin Fields always a threat to just run instead of actually throwing the ball. So even when the team is calling a pass play, your your chances of getting a target are much lower than a wide receiver for any other team. Uh, DJ Moore is a fantastic player who I think it, uh, I think his skill set is amongst the, the the better wide receivers in the league. But his situation is is so brutal this also, year. Also, Bijan is the RB two off the board right now, which is Whoa, which is just insane, baby. To me. It's insane to me. I I think that is real. part of that is literally just I want him on my team. I I, I genuinely oh, yeah. think that's part of it. Is it's like this is fun. Um, all right, that was best ball breakdown presented by Underdog Fantasy. Get your first deposit matched up to a hundred bucks using the code Ballers. We will be back next week. We will recap all of the breaking news. And a whole lot more. Thank you for your questions today. Early breakout sleepers, busts, and values on the way. Nice. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com. And follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.